I have in the studio Treasurer Wayne Swan. Wayne, thank you for coming in. Uh, good morning, Leo. Now, I must say, overnight, uh, things changed a little bit. We are in South Australia sweating on the Olympic Dam project. Chair of BHP, Jack Nasser, was complimentary to the government, saying getting a surplus was important. But he also said that uh, Australia is one of the highest cost countries in the world and he's urged you to use your review of the Fair Work Act to move the pendulum back to an appropriate balance. What's your reaction to that? Well, first of all, I've read uh, Mr Nasser's comments as well, and I've read his speech in detail, and he does make the very important point that coming back to surplus is very important, particularly at a time of uh, global instability and uncertainty that we face. I've also read his remarks about Australia and the cost base here, and it is true that uh, in our patchwork economy, whilst it is very strong, uh, there are structural pressures in our economy, structural pressures which, for example, flow from a higher dollar. And, of course, one of the reasons why we are so insistent on bringing our budget back to surplus is to ensure that our fiscal policy is in good shape but he has, so, we can give, so we can give the Reserve yeah. Bank greater flexibility but, but, when it comes But he to has had rates. a go at our, our work laws. Yes, he has, and yeah. we've got a review of the Fair Work Act. It's a fair dinkum review. Uh, we are listening to what both uh, employers are saying and, and business is saying in that review. We do take these issues of competitiveness and productivity very seriously, and indeed yeah. at the core of the budget is a whole program to lift the productivity of this country over a long period of time. Okay. At the moment, your surplus is predicated, as I understand it, on a relatively stable world economy. Now, recently, unfortunately, you've got the situation in Greece, which could turn things upside down. If you needed another stimulus package, because we've had Saul Eastlake, one of our top economists, warning that we could end up with another uh, recession, which is not a good thing. That's a word you and most economists don't want to hear or say. Do you have the capacity in the budget to, uh, to do another stimulus if you needed to? Well, first things first, our forecasts uh, are predicated on the fact that there is a long and painful adjustment happening in Europe. And indeed, in our forecasts, uh, we forecast a recession in Europe. We forecast negative growth for Europe. So when we've put our forecast forward in the budget of trend growth of 3.25%, we've already taken into account that Europe is in recession. So it's not true to say that uh, so, events in Europe now haven't been anticipated so you're in saying, our forecasts. You're saying then that if things go down bad in Greece, you'll still have your surplus. You'll what, be fine. Well, what I'm saying is that uh, we have strong growth here in Australia. We have strong growth in our region. And events in Europe have been taking a turn for the worse for some time. We have anticipated that turn for the worse. And we have put that into our forecast. And what we do still forecast is for Australia trend growth, the strongest growth of any major developed economy. Now, of course, we are not immune if things were to take a really uh, a deeper downturn in the US. We're not immune, uh, sorry, in Europe. We're not immune from that. But the point I'm making is that when we see this news out of Europe, we shouldn't assume that it hasn't been taken into account in our forecast. It has. Growth in our region is still strong. We are seeing the beginnings of a recovery in the United States, but there is a question mark about that. If you but needed... we can be confident here in Australia, yeah. our economic fundamentals remain strong. If you if you needed another stimulus, is there capacity to have that? To have well, one? well, what we, I, I wouldn't speculate about that, but I would make this point that we've seen in recent times that the Reserve Bank has decided to cut the official mm. cash rate, a substantial cut. There is plenty of room in the Australian economy for the deployment of monetary policy if the Reserve Bank independently decides to do that, given the inflation forecast. Yep. And we've seen it deploy monetary policy in recent times. So we are in a far better position than any other developed economy to respond to these events. Australia's debt requires a service payment of around $8 billion a year. When would you expect this debt to be retired? Well, we're paying it down, and that's uh, that. All of that is laid out in but the budget. But in very it's modest a, amounts, though. Yeah, yeah. We build sm uh, small surpluses, and they build up over time. That's true. The fact is that we move to stimulate our economy, and the consequence of that is the strength we have today. What we then do is come back to surplus. That's why we're so insistent on coming back to surplus, and we pay down that debt. That's the right thing to How do. How long do you think we, it'll take us? To well, get it'll, that it'll debt down. take us through to the end of the decade, and that's in, in all of the forecasts. But it's a very modest amount of debt compared to other uh, advanced economies, one-tenth uh, of the net debt that we've got in other advanced economies. All right. Jack Snelling, our Treasurer, says that this state is facing the largest shortfall in revenue in the state's history. He claims that the state's GST is down by $1.3 billion over the next four years, combined with further state tax hits of $1.5 billion. We're facing a very savage budget. 
Could you have done more as Federal Treasurer for this state? We've done an enormous amount for, amount for this state. The fact is that government revenues across the board are down, and we've seen that in the federal budget. In total, revenues are down $150 billion since the global financial crisis. Yeah. So it's hit our federal revenues, and it's hit the GST revenues. In terms of the distribution of GST revenues, that is decided by an independent committee, just in the same way as it was decided uh, under Mr Howard. But the fact is, you've got people like Mr Abbott, who actually want to change that formula and punish South Australia to the tune of something like a billion dollars. So what we have done, in addition to what comes through to South Australia from the GST revenue, is very significant investments in terms of infrastructure and other payments, health and so on. So here in South Australia, yeah. we're paying a dollar sixteen per head as opposed to 88 cents per head in Western Australia or so, 94 in New South Wales. So, so South Australia, in terms of Commonwealth support, is an enormous beneficiary of com Commonwealth support. So, uh, and, and, and that is appropriate given South Australia's position in the you, Federation. Are you really saying to Jack Snelling, hey, Jack, don't blame me. We're generous to you. Cut your cloth. No, what I'm saying is that South Australia gets the support it deserves uh, because it's a smaller state. It is only appropriate that the uh, uh, the formulas we have in, in place in this country, where stronger states yep. supply support to smaller states, that's happening now. We're very supportive of that. Mr Abbott wants to change it. Mr Barnett wants to take a lot of money out of South Australia. We think it's appropriate that this support should be provided to South Australia, and we are providing it. The National Disability Scheme requires all of the states to cooperate and, in your model, to contribute money. Now, as you know, our state's flagged a very tough budget blaming shortfalls, we've talked about that. Do you expect to get this up now, given that our state is going to be crying well, poor? Well, what we expect uh, to, to do is to put in place the first stage of the scheme, which is why we've put in place a billion dollars over the Ford estimates. What we've managed to do is to bring our budget back to surplus, make room for those productivity enhancing... What will you want from us, though, about Wayne, for this well, scheme? Well, that's, that's what we've got to talk to the South Australians about. We've only just made our announcement. What we do is want to, we want to set up a number of sites across the country that will require the cooperation of state governments... Very complex policy, very important policy. Okay. We'll be having a discussion with South Australia about that. We haven't had that yet. In, in, the, in the discussion about your compensation payments for the carbon tax, which, by the way, your advertising doesn't mention, it talks about the compensation but not the carbon tax. I think we've been talking about carbon prices well, for something, something like five years. Yes, we <laughs> have. Yes, we have. But my question is this. A lot of pensioners are saying, I'm missing out. On, on a lot of this compensation. What are you saying? Well, today? single pensioners uh, will, before the end of June, receive $250 and couple pensioners $338, and that's coming through. So, we'll be so going into just, their account. just for the record, as Treasurer, what proportion of Australians are going to be worse off as a result of this tax? Well, I think it's something like six out of ten households will will receive uh, assistance, yeah. which is greater than or equal to the costs that come from it. So the great bulk of low and middle income Australians will be more than compensated but what, uh, for the carbon so who, price, who, and that includes the pensioners. So who misses out? Well, those on, on higher incomes will receive less assistance. For example, on the 1st of July, yeah. uh, we've got tax cuts coming in. Uh, these are significant tax cuts. It's a tripling of the tax-free threshold, yep. worth about $300 up to $80,000. Right. So they'll be coming through increased family payments, increased pensions. All right. Now, some economists are saying that our carbon tax at $23 a tonne, much higher than the rest of the world, that we could easily be at a competitive disadvantage. Did you, do you accept that? No, I don't necessarily don't? accept that at all. I mean, well, the, the price the, is nine. Uh, uh, the yes, European I, I know, I know what yeah, the yeah. I know what the European price is, and it, it is down at the moment. But I don't think anybody can anticipate that it's going to be at that, those levels in two or three years' time. We've got a fixed price. We are making a gradual adjustment through carbon pricing to avoid a much sharper adjustment later on. This is the appropriate way to do it. The Productivity Commission recommended uh, a, an economy-wide price on carbon. That's what we're okay. doing, and it's going to set us up for the future, are like you, some of the great reforms are, of the past. Are you? A, are you you anticipating much higher power prices? For example, AGL have gone to the regulators and said, we want an extra 150 a year. Well, power prices have been increasing uh, separately and completely yep. for other reasons over a long period of time, uh, yep. separate from carbon pricing. Uh, there'll be an impact of about $3 a week in terms of okay. carbon pricing, but there'll be plenty of people out there right. running a scare campaign, claiming price increases are due to carbon pricing, which right. they're not. Do you, do, you, do you want to shut coal-fired power stations in South Australia? 
No, we're not setting out to necessarily shut coal-fired power stations. What we're setting out to do is to put a price on carbon so that over time there'll be a change in our energy mix. Coal-fired power stations will continue to produce electricity in this country sure. for some time so to come. But you... we want to see over time a change in the mix to more efficient energy use. That's what the aim of what, the carbon what, price what, is What to energy do. use do you anticipate is going in the, in the reasonable near future? What energy do you believe will replace coal? Well, as, as, as carbon pricing works its way through the system, there will be the reliance on gas and a further reliance as time goes on in terms of renewable energy. And they're the sorts of things which will kick into the system as a result of a carbon price. In South Australia, for example, that could be more wind. OK, well, we, we've got a, plenty of wind as, yeah, and, as it is And you now. may well get more. Yeah, well, the only thing is that th th that's one of the reasons. When you talk to uh, regulators about electricity, one of, one of the things they say is because we have a 20% renewable energy target, that actually pushes the price of electricity generation up. Yeah, and the you, idea you is that, that over time, the yeah. overall carbon price uh, uh, takes the place of all of those other special schemes. Yeah. Look, uh, another, another point that I think is really important, um, as you know, there's a lot of scandal going on about the Craig Thompson affair. I'm not going to ask you to make a judgment on that because I know you won't. No, I won't be uh, judging no. jury, but some ha, no. politicians are running around trying to sure. beat that, and that is yeah. entirely inappropriate. Okay. My question, though, is do you expect this government, to which you are the treasurer, to run its full term. Absolutely. You do. And we have been very successful in getting our legislation through the parliament. Mr Abbott is out there being negative all the time and trying to create the expectation there'll be an election. Doesn't have any policies that he wants to tell the people about, but says he wants an election. What we're going to do is get on with our program, responsibly managing right. our economy, bringing our budget back to surplus and supporting our future prosperity. One final question. As the world gets the jitters about uh, Greek, uh, the, the Greek crisis... What levers are at your disposal if you need to use them to make sure that we get minimally hit? Well, the fundamental strength in, a, in the Australian economy that we have now uh, and the policies that we have in place for the future, and we have plenty of room to deploy monetary or fiscal policy should that be required. Australians can have faith that our fundamental strength will see us in a better position in these circumstances than any other developed economy. Wayne, thank you for coming in. Uh, thank you. Where do you go to from here? Are you going to see Jack Snelling today? And, uh, uh... No, I'm, wan <laughs> I'm, I'm wandering around. I'm giving a speech later on yep. uh, this morning, and I'm going over to uh, a dental hospital and have having a chat there, doing a few things, because we've got an, an initiative in the budget to help people who haven't been able to get their teeth fixed. That's a, that's, that's, that's a the big... We've got people listening today on that who have been waiting years I know. in pain. And, and that's the great can, thing about can, the budget. We've can been we make, make a big difference well, to we that? Well, we can, yeah. And, and that's one of the good things about this budget. We've made room in very difficult circumstances for some of the most vulnerable in our community, and particularly those people who haven't been able to get their teeth fixed. All right. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Wayne Swan, Federal Treasurer on 5AA.